Today's world is built on steel structures. That steel was buried under the ground for millions of years. Our species dug that ore and created today's world. But it was a long road of human development and innovation. How we started with it and what those beginnings were like, we are discovering today. Our ancient ancestor Homo erectus had standardized stone tools and implements. The first recognizable objects modified by hominids by breaking or hitting shaped pieces of stone are about to point 5 million years old. They were found in the Avish Valley in Ethiopia. This is the beginning of the use of stone by hominids. Homo erectus took a step further. They could not survive without stone tools. The use of stone was the basis of technology for millions of years. Until ancient miners and metallurgists began to mine and process copper around 5000 BCE. But even at the beginning of the Metal Age, ancient miners were also looking for a valuable stone that could be used. Another thousand years will pass. After the beginning of the Copper Age or the Chalcolithic, while weapons and tools made of metal will be as hard as those made of stone. It is known that mining started around 6000 BCE. While there is a strong possibility that mining started in the Paleolithic as well, these finds show us that in some places, they dug deeper into the ground to find certain minerals. It was mostly red color because all the caves we know, at least those in the French and Spanish area, are painted in red. These are mineral paints. In those early times, mineral colors were also on the surface and could be collected from the surface. What today is inconceivable at all, that we can find something like that. But maybe for some specific ones, we had to dig deeper into the ground to get to them. We don't actually see those traces in that early Paleolithic era. Since the time of the Neolithic, the red color comes into greater use. We can see it in the sites in Turkey, which start very early. The first farming in Turkey began as early as 8000 BC. So, we can also go further south towards Jericho. In that area we can find the deceased, whose bones are painted red. It's a very interesting combination. In fact, you cannot put any kind of paint over the deceased. He has some clothes, and he also has his tissue. And when all that falls apart, that red color still won't sit directly on the bone, because there is that space in between. However, we see that the bones are painted, especially the bones of the skull and pelvic bones in women. And there is another problem with the findings. Some or some bones were scraped, so there was an idea that they might have been cannibals. However, it is possible that this variant is to speed up the actual removal of tissue when someone dies. To get to the bone, what is interesting, even on the body of the deceased, the same red colors are not used. Sometimes the skull can be painted red, which is associated with cinnabarite. Therefore, the most attractive red color is cinnabar and other parts of the body, especially the pelvic bones in women, are then colored with hematite. In addition to flint and quartzite, the ancient miners looked for something else in the earth. They were in search of precious stones and colors. Stones that sparkled and colors. That could be used in painting the first paintings. They were on price. In addition, precious stones and colors had their role in the rituals of ancient man. The preciousness of those colors and stones forced the ancient miners to dig even deeper and to start changing the environment with discovering metals, and the environmental change became even greater. The search for quality stone has long interested ancient miners. During the Neolithic or New Stone Age, which lasted from about 8000 BC to 2000 BC, in the territory of today's France and Britain, holes up to 100 meters long were created. People dug them in order to find flint. The oldest known mine on Earth was found in present-day Switzerland. 
in southern Africa. A 40,000-year-old mine was found there in the Nguenya Mountains. It was created when people dug in search of red ochre, a color used in funeral ceremonies. The bones were dyed in red with that ochre. Around 3000 BC in ancient Egypt, with various techniques such as drilling, breaking or polishing of alabaster and granite. Vases and monuments were produced. Pharaoh Djoser was the first ruler of Egypt, who built buildings exclusively from stone. The army of ancient Egypt until the 7th century BC had weapons made of stone, the tips of arrows, spears and axes were made of stone, which was much more lethal than weapons made of bronze. Stone was widely used until steel was discovered, because with steel you get the same hardness as with stone. Rivers roll stones, they shape it and in fact, if you need a shape, you can already find it somewhere in the river bed. Of course, in those parts of the river that had an accelerated flow, where larger stones roll, then you can choose. You don't have to mine anything, it's all there. They are easier to shape and everything else, because in fact they are somehow already in shape and size for the hand. The Danish archaeologist Christian Jurgensen Thomsen, who was born in 1788 in Copenhagen and lived until 1865, established a system of three ages. He was worked in the Danish National Museum and had to somehow organize a large exhibition of Scandinavian antiquities and archaeological finds. In 1819, that exhibition was opened and Thompson classified the finds from prehistory in it. According to three ages, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. John Wabuck, an archaeologist and banker, in his book Prehistoric Times expanded the system of three ages by dividing the Stone Age into the old, Paleolithic, and the new, Neolithic. Later, the division into ages experienced even greater expansions. Thus the Bronze Age became the Copper Age, or Enneolithic, which precedes the true Bronze Age. The beginning of some era is not the same for all parts of the world. The Neolithic came to the territory of Great Britain approximately 6,000 years ago, which is a significant delay compared to southeastern Europe. But how did people get those first metals? Copper is mostly the first that we register. A little later and we see the gold. But copper is primary. When volcanic activity throws out lava, metals go along with it. Sulfur that also evaporates from the volcano, it reaches the sky where it binds with other gases and creates sulfur rain. That sulfur rain falls at the time when that lava has already started to harden. That sulfuric acid that is created through that sulfur rain dissolves everything except elemental copper. So, we have, somewhere in ancient times, layers of elemental copper that were a few millimeters or a few centimeters thick. Then you go down through that depth of different structures. Then there's oxide copper. Then you go carbonate copper and down you go sulfode copper. The one we're exploiting the most today. So, we had to spend it all to get to this one down. That would be all for now. More about the life of ancient miners and the development of metallurgy in the following episodes. If you like the video, subscribe.